Okay. So you can see we have a, what I call, black box, or an export radio on the bench. And I want to explain and show a little bit um, why modern radios, and it's not specifically Rangers. I know this says Galaxy on it. I think everybody that knows a lot about, or you don't even need to know a lot, but knows anything about the, these, the majority of your export radios, doesn't matter what it says on the faceplate, it's probably a Ranger or RCI circuit board on the inside, just a different faceplate. Um, so for all you guys that argue, my Galaxy is better than your Rangers, better than your Connex is better than your whoever's names on the faceplate, it's a bunch of hooey, they're all the exact same radio on the inside. But, um, like I say, this is not a slam on Ranger RCI. It's all modern CB radios. And why sideband reception quality sucks on all of the modern sideband radios, and why pretty much all of the sideband radios of the past had fantastic reception quality. Some better than others, don't get me wrong, there's lots of, lots of differences, and there's idiosyncrasy you know, differences between radios, but for the most part, old good, new bad. And the reason uh, old bad, or old good, new bad, is what's showing up there on the spectrum analyzer. And the reason that is, is what's sitting on top of this radio, and that's crystal filters. Um, they just spent more money on crystal filters back in the day and had better, and it's not so much better, but larger crystal filters. So, uh, and I can't blame the radio manufacturers. They're supplying what the people want. And unfortunately, in our modern society, what the people want is cheap shit. They don't want to, they want maximum amount for a little, you know, maximum amount of whatever they're buying for the smallest amount of money they can pay for it. Where back in the day, people weren't afraid to pay for something. Um, you have to remember, back in the day, a radio, a high-end CB radio. I'm not talking an export radio with lots of bands and all these fancy features. We're just talking a plain AM sideband radio. But the ultra-premium brands back then, in the 70s, um, you know, late 70s, early 80s, it could cost you a third to as half of as much as what a car cost. Um, I can buy a hell of a lot of these radios for half the price of a car nowadays. Um, you know, you can do your inflation calculations or what you want, but that's I always use that as an example. The ultra high-end radios back then cost a third to half as much as a car cost, and you look at how much these radios cost nowadays compared to how much a car cost. Huge difference. So, one of the big differences between the old and the new radios is the crystal filters. The crystal filters just cost a lot more back then, and they were bigger. And that's one of the big things, is their size. There's more crystals to them. The modern radios, like the one you're looking at, have crystal filters that look exactly like this. Okay, it's one or the other. Depending on vintage and make and whatnot, but it's going to have one of these little small. So if you ever take the covers off of one of, you know, any... And I say modern, I mean, hell, anything in the 90s. <laughs> um, the nine, 1990s on, basically, has one of these in it. Okay, but you compare that in size to all those ones in the background there. Big difference. You can see, you know, it takes, what, you could fit like three of these inside of one of those. And you get into the really high-end radios, um like a, uh, a stoner or a CPI, the filters are even wider. They're about that wide. So, you know, but you get what you pay for. You want to buy a half a car, or you do, you just want to spend a week's wages on something. So, but I want to show actually show that performance and what that means. So what a crystal filter does is, it takes the incoming signal, okay, but it only allows, so you can have all kinds, basically everything that's coming in over the air into this thing, but it only lets out a very small frequency range. Now on sideband, that frequency is changing with your audio, or with the, the actual frequency of your voice. So as your voice frequency changes, the actual transmit frequency changes. So if you look up there, it'll vary in, inside that little pass band. And that's what I'm talking about, the pass band. This uh, hooked up to a spectrum analyzer that has a tracking generator. 
So currently I have it set. The output frequency is 10.695 megahertz, which is common for most of your most all of these radios. That's what they use for crystal filters, okay? Um, and the crystal that's hooked up right now, the filter, it's actually this one here. This is out of a uh, what would go in a GE Super Bass. Or the Mobiles or Midland or a couple radios that use those dual boards, but this is the crystal filter out of one of those. Now, the more expensive or the older filters had a narrow, narrower passband. As time went on and we started to use those cheap ones, you'll see it will start to widen. Okay, now what does that mean to you, the, the radio user? Well, the wider that gets, the more hash and trash and adjacent channel splatter that comes in. Um, just overall noise. That's why the really good radios had really good reception quality. And it was they were very quiet on sideband. You turn one of these things on, it's they're just noisy. They're, they're all noisy. And like I say, it's not a Ranger thing. It's all of the modern radios. They all use these little filters, and they're all noisy. Now, there's two things to note. The tracking generator, which is the output on the left there, it's outputting a 0 dB uh, dBm signal, okay? Or no, negative, uh, negative 20 uh, dBm signal. So, we also have to look at the amplitude. So, not only the pass band, but how far, because you see that line on either side of it, where it you know, drops down and then comes over, and same thing where it's coming in. You'll see as I change the filters, that will change as well. So that means, you know, from the peak at the top there down to the bottom, how much it filters before it, it just still allows everything through to a certain point. Where the better filters, you'll see that line on either side is down farther. And you'll see the next thing I'm going to hook up is one of these. Look how much shorter that is. It's still allowing so much more. It does have, you know, it, it'll be wider for starters, but it's also not filtering out all that other shit, that's why you get a lot of noise and you'll still hear a lot of adjacent channel crap coming through your receiver is because it's, it's not down as far. It doesn't attenuate. Once it reaches that pass band, it doesn't attenuate as much. So, let me get this one changed here. Like I say, this is exactly what you would find in a one of those dual board Cybernet chassis. Okay, And we'll hook up one of these little guys. Yeah, make sure I get the right, because there is an input and an output to these, so you have to make sure you hook up to the right one. They don't filter worth a... Well, they do filter, but they just don't filter very well if you hook up the inputs and outputs backwards. And get the ground hooked up. Okay, so there's that little guy hooked up. Now, you can see how much wider that is. Yeah, holy shit. Now you can still see there's a little dot, white dot right there, and there's another one right there. That's the marker that I had up there that originally had it set, where it was at 2.6, it's still up there on the screen, 2.616 kilohertz was the distance between my marker and the delta marker. So, yeah, let's see. Marker, we'll just turn it off and start over normal. So put the marker right about there. And delta. So that's about 5.2 kilohertz. Basically, it's twice as wide. And also notice the difference, it's actually a little bit lower at the top end, so it's actually attenuating your incoming signal a little bit more. The signal you actually want to hear, it's actually attenuating that a little bit more, and it's not filtering. Once it gets down from here to here, we're down to minus 70 dBm right there, okay? So it's not down as far. So let's hook up another one. I'm going to disconnect that one, and I'm going to hook up the slightly shorter one here. Cables again. See, that's the output. And input side. Okay. 
looks pretty much the same. Not really that much difference. Actually, it is a little bit wider. There you can see we've got a marker right there. And this marker is now inside of it. So actually, that shorter filter is even a little bit wider. Now let's look at some something that a lot of people are going to be familiar with. And that's the Cobra 2000s, pretty much any of the Unidens, you know, Cobra 148 GTLs. If you ever had covers off of those, you're probably used to looking and seeing one of these, okay? Um, my understanding is Uniden made their own because it was just cheaper if they did them in-house. I can't blame them. Um, then, you know, instead of getting a crystal manufacturer you know, or a filter manufacturer to make these nice sealed cans, um, they just made them in-house, saved them money. So, but still, these are good filters. They've got lots of crystals in there and good performers. Now, these are a different frequency, so I need to change that. No longer 10695. These are 7.8 megahertz. And we'll leave all of the other settings exactly the same. I'll hook up the input. And hook up the output. And there you go. You see how narrow that is. Go back to marker. Start over. Oh, no. So we'll say right about there. That's, the same. That's about 2.75 kilohertz, let's say. Pass band. And notice this line is down farther, and this line, the top of it, is up higher. It's closer, because like I say, there's 20 dBm signal going, minus 20 dBm going in. And the other one was down around minus 30 or a little bit less. So it was actually cutting out a lot of the signal we actually want to hear. It was, you know, attenuating that signal. And then also, after you've reached your cutoff, it's attenuating more of that other, and this this is where you get all that noise and your tr your unwanted trash is the stuff that's after you know once you've reached the edges because like I say this one attenuates even more, so that's why the Cobra two thousands all the Unidens you know pretty much I'll say they pretty much all had this style of filter in them, so let's grab a one of these this is what you would find in a cybernet now, if you wonder why it's written in marker on the side that's because when i put these in the parts cabinet i got drawers full of these things um i can't stand them up they don't balance very well so i lay them down on their side and that way if i write it on the side it's easy for me to just pull the drawer out and i can see what the the frequency is on them so let's get this one hooked up put Input. Oh, come here, little guy. Okay, and you can see again we have. Now, another thing to notice: see this one. This one attenuates very little of your incoming signal because that is the minus 30 dBm, which is the actual signal level being put into it. So it really doesn't attenuate much of the incoming signal and still has good attenuation after you've reached you know on either side of the pass band so really good filter now you can manufacturers could order these things to whatever spec they wanted and I want to show that here's actually two if you look at these both of these if you see there they're both 7.8 megahertz it ever focuses on them but you can see that they're both 7.8 okay but this one has a much wider pass band. Okay, I'll put. So it's not just that they're older, it's what the manufacturer spec'd also. So you can see this one much, much wider. Okay. Off. Oh, back on. Just easier for me to turn the marker off and turn it back on reset these things basically just starting from scratch with the markers okay so that one's like 4.8 you know 
eight, so to say, 4.9 kilohertz wide. But, uh, like I say, now look how much it attenuates. Actually, let me widen the span a little bit. Widen that to 20 kilohertz. You can see how much better the attenuation is. So this one may be a little bit wider here, but it's going to make for a quieter receive because it's even attenuating on the sides, you know, af before and after the filter, all the frequencies coming in. It's going to be down, e it's down even farther. So it's really cutting out a lot of that, you know, hash and trash that would be coming into your receiver. And then here's just another one. This one's uh, an 11, I've got to change my frequency. Let me put my span back to 10 kilohertz. We'll change the frequency. This one is an 11. 0.2735 megahertz. Get this hooked up. Now put and put side. Okay, now you can see that one's a little funky looking. The shoulders are a little bit, you know, a little bit more tapered, but still a fairly good filter. Like I say, we're back down to the 10, uh, 10 kilohertz span. So we put a marker again. Normal. And let's say right about there. Delta. At about 2.817, so fairly narrow. But like I say, that's the reason your modern radios. Um, yeah, if you wonder why the screens froze, it was calibrating. It does that. They, they do that every once in a while. But uh, that's the reason your modern radios uh, have much noisier receive. The sideband is so much better on the older ones is, like I say, all comes down to size. These older filters just have more crystals in them to do the filtering than these modern ones do. So, there you go. There's just a... For the, uh, I actually had some, I had a conversation about, you know, why uh, the old radios are better with somebody, and uh, I thought I'd do a video to actually show that, that uh, the old filters did have narrower... Uh, pass bands. Now, you could um, get these fairly narrow pass band. Um, the problem is they don't attenuate very well out on the edges afterwards, but uh, I have seen these down to 2.2 uh, kilohertz bandpass filters. I have a few of them. Um, they're like little blocks of gold. I only use those in certain radios. And what they came in was a uh, they were an optional filter if anybody's familiar with, it's probably the grandfather of every export radio on the planet. Um, if you own a black box radio, you can probably thank uh, Clear Channel. It was a Ranger AR3300 and a Ranger AR3500. I have close to a dozen of those. When you purchase those radios, you could get an optional 2.2 kilohertz filter installed in one of those. A very narrow passband. Made for a lot better receive quality on sideband. So, you know, like I said, you can get them narrower. It's just, yeah, out on the edges, they're not that great. You're e Even with those filters, they still just don't sound as good as one of these that are a little bit wider, but like I say, they attenuate a lot more in the, uh, out on the outside edges, so they filter out a lot more of that you know, that hash and trash and adjacent channel splatter and whatnot. So, there you go, just a brief, and like I say, none of these measurements were going for accuracy. It was just to generally show you what the difference is. I, you know, I don't think a lot of people understand um, when I say the pass band, I'll talk to somebody on the phone or in an email, you know, why they're better. That was, I just wanted to show that. That's, that's, that's why. Basically, new ones, twice as wide as the old ones. That's you know, in a nutshell. <laughs> so there you go. Crystal filters and why your older radios receive better.